In this video, Gil T answers two common questions about testosterone replacement therapy. Can TRT raise blood pressure? And can TRT cause a red face? Well, any, ch any hormonal change can cause a change to everything in your body, including the complexion of your skin. And again, this is one that you probably have a lot more experience than I do when it comes to uh, skin or skin appearance. But we have to consider a handful of factors uh, as, as far as what affects the way our skin looks. We know that our liver has one tremendous aspect of how our skin looks. Uh, you don't have to go far outside of uh, just thinking Billy Rubin. Uh, jaundice is a skin condition that's usually caused by a backup of the liver's efficacy to clear uh, hemoglobin. So uh, when, when that elevates, you're going to notice yellowing in the eyes, yellowing in the skin, varying complexion, as well as lethargy and other issues. But uh, liver health is very important for skin complexion. One thing that I like to recommend for all guys, uh, whether on TRT or not, uh, for liver health is to supplement twice a day with a... a uh, compound, I uh, actually happen to have mine here, called NAC, which is N-acetylcysteine, really good amino acid, uh, which acts as a precursor to the most potent antioxidant in our body, which is glutathione. If you're young and healthy and have a well-functioning liver, the NAC is going to do a real nice job for you. 600 milligrams in the morning and 600 milligrams at night with a meal. And if you want to take it a step further, I personally like to use injectable glutathione, which is compounded and I will use one to two ml of that per week intramuscular. And that actually helps as we age and the liver loses some efficacy. That helps you with hair, nails, and skin and overall liver health, uh, especially with non-alcoholic fatty liver. Uh, or if you use any over-the-counter medications, MSEDs, Tylenol, et cetera, that stress the liver, let alone if you are a consumer of alcohol. Outside of the liver issues, when it comes to skin, uh, you know, guys always like to point at erythrocytes and say, well, my hemoglobin must have gone up, my hematocrit must have gone up, and that's why my skin is red. Look, we know that testosterone, first and foremost, erythrocytes uh, will take a long time. So it's not like, hey, I'm on my third week of injections and, you know, my, my skin is red and I'm itchy and, you know, should I donate blood? No, it's going to take about four to six months before you're going to notice a dent in your erythrocytes. And quite frankly, not everyone experiences it. And those that do uh, usually can make adjustments to their lifestyle and protocols in order to alleviate for that. I personally never donate blood, and I would say a vast majority of our patients, I mean, over 95%, do not need to, nor do they donate blood. We do have a handful who are extremely susceptible to secondary erythrocytosis. I would say it's extremely uncommon. You're going to find that more in people who are obese, smokers, have uh, undiagnosed or untreated obstructive sleep apnea, or live at extremely high elevations, in which case it's really negligible because your body uh, uh, adapts to it uh, accordingly. It's uh, not something we tend to worry about too much, but you also have to consider the fact that testosterone does act as a vasodilator in a sense because it does increase nitric oxide. And when you retain nitric oxide, your endothelium tends to do a much better job for you and your veins and arteries uh, as far as vasodilation. When you have vasodilation, you're going to have better circulation. And when you have better circulation, you may get a better complexion that you were lacking previously. So. Um, guys think that testosterone increases blood pressure. On the contrary, when it's dosed correctly and optimal, I have seen it actually improve blood pressure. So some guys who are on blood pressure medication previously have been able to titrate or eventually come off once they are optimal on their hormones. We know that it's a cardiovascular protectant together with estradiol, and it does help to regulate that. Uh, you know, you also have to consider other lifestyle, lifestyle factors such as nutrition, and uh, in training aspects, which people tend to pay a little more attention to when they begin, they will notice a little more vascularity, uh, a little more vascularity closer to the skin. So there's a lot of underlying factors. And uh, I think people put a little too much stock into a red face and automatically run out to donate blood. So I would look at some other aspects and I wouldn't sweat it too much. It really is very rarely a true concern. And if you do feel that you have elevated blood pressure directly related to a kidney issue or water retention. First, you need to consider the aldosterone spike when beginning a hormone therapy. You may wanna to try to avoid packaged foods, which are notoriously high in sodium, and you may want to consider increasing your potassium intake. Uh, 
naturally with foods like avocados and sweet potatoes. And if you're still lacking or you still, uh, re, you know, take in a, a high sodium content, you can supplement with a sodium uh, supplement as well. I'm sorry, a potassium supplement as well in order to counterbalance that. And lastly, drink a ton of water. I mean, it's good for every bodily function and it's going to help you with, uh, with edema if that's what you're suffering from. So uh, drinking a lot of water, balancing out your electrolytes, primarily potassium, uh, reducing a little bit of sodium, and uh, this all stabilizes usually within the first couple of months. Great, great.